Now we as a movement exist in the millions of individuals, but together we move as one. And as one, we cannot be stopped. We will not be stopped. What's up guys, Ben here, and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Vegans are on the rise. From vegan cafes popping up all over the world to even vegan marches. I saw a crazy one when I was in Prague. Then of course you have those crazy documentaries such as Cowspiracy, which doesn't just highlight the ethical concerns in the meat industry, but also the vast environmental damage. For example, cow flatulence actually makes up approximately 15% of greenhouse gases on the planet. So finding a meat substitute may not just be necessary for ethical and health reasons, but also to save the planet. Thus, the vegans are rising. We are here today for the calves taken away from their mothers. We are here today for the hens who are exploited for their eggs. We are here today for the chickens who are exploited and murdered for their flesh. We are here today for the pigs who are locked in farrowing crates. We According to Grandview Research, the global vegan food market was valued at over $12 billion in 2018 and was projected to expand at a compound annual growth rate of nearly 10% from 2019 to 2025. According to the Vegan Society, between the years of 2012 and 2017, the meat-free food demand grew by over 987%. Now, surprisingly, I actually do agree with many of the points that these vegans make with regards to their ethical health and environmental concerns with eating meat. But if you're like me and you love great food and you can't imagine not eating juicy steaks and succulent burgers, then I have a solution for you guys. Two companies are leading the charge using the power of science and genetic engineering to create realistic meat substitutes, which taste exactly the same as the real. Thing. This took the internet by storm and caused a massive debate online between celebrities, influencers, and customers. This tastes like a burger. It tastes like meat. This is all made from plants. It's all made from this plants. This tastes like beef. Doesn't that just look like real meat? So meat-like. They what? always say it's well, just say. like a burger. It tastes like yuckers. Beef farmers of the world, relax. No, it doesn't taste like a burger. Opinions differed on the Impossible Burger's relative meatiness, but the debate itself was fantastic free advertising, helping to propel Impossible into major chains like White Castle, and then in the summer of 2019, into more than 7,000 Burger Kings across the US. So how can you take advantage of this growing trend as an investor? Well, in this video, we're going to find out as I deep dive into these meat substitute businesses beyond meat and impossible foods. Be sure you guys watch till the end to find out whether I personally own shares in this industry. Without further ado, let's dive in. Welcome back guys to Motivation to Invest. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys can give this video a big thumbs up. That really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, which allows me create more great content like this for you guys. In addition, if you want more investing tips and exclusive stock picks, which I personally am investing into, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel and turn that notification bell on. With that being said, let's get into the video. So what are the three main differences between Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat? Well, the first and most important is that of genetically modified organisms, or GMO. Impossible Foods uses GMO to create its products, and Beyond Meat doesn't. This has caused a lot of controversy. Beyond Meat is also making a very meaty burger from plants. They're very non-GMO, they stress that all the time uh, to differentiate themselves from Impossible. It would be much easier to genetically modify plant material to make it uh, uh, take on the, the texture and appearance and aroma of, of, of animal protein, right. but we won't do that. Beyond Meat had one of the biggest IPOs of the year in 2019, 
So Impossible, which is still privately held, has some catching up to do. There's also the fiery debate about what tastes better between Impossible Burgers and Beyond Burgers. Some give the slight edge to Impossible Burgers, but is this down to its genetically modified organisms? The Impossible Burger contains a molecule called HEM, which is found naturally in foods and essentially tells our brains we're eating meat. There's one problem though, to get enough of it, Impossible Foods genetically engineers HEM by inserting soybean DNA into modified yeast. However, eating genetically modified foods is viewed as negative by a section of the population. Onto the main difference number two, and that is the product pipeline. Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods, both have over 100 people, including scientists, working in their research and development departments. These teams dig into the biochemistry of meat and look for ways to make their products mimic the real thing. In an interview with a food news website called The Spoon, Impossible Foods CEO, Pat Brown, said the next new product we'll launch is almost certainly going to be like a beef steak. Impossible Foods was founded in 2011 when Pat Brown, a longtime vegan, was nearing the end of an accomplished career in biochemistry. I've been a scientist my whole life and just came to this realization that by far the most important scientific question in the world is, what makes meat delicious? Producing meat from animals is the most destructive technology on earth and if we're going to avert uh, catastrophic climate change, we have to find a better way to produce meat. Beyond Meat CEO would also love to launch a steak since it has that wow factor, but its highest priority at the moment is getting the price of meat alternatives below the price of meat and achieve this at scale. This is one of the major things holding back both Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods, and it's that they're just more expensive than the normal meat. So these days, if you go into the supermarket and you try to buy some products from Beyond Meat or Impossible Foods, you'll find they're much more expensive than normal meat. This can put a lot of people off. Beyond Meat continues to focus on innovating across its three main platforms, beef, pork, and poultry. Pork is the most widely consumed meat worldwide. A chicken substitute is also likely to be a big area going forward. Two scientists from the University of Missouri developed a process to produce plant-based chicken with realistic texture and Beyond Meat helped to commercialize it. But the product was pulled last year as the Beyond Burger took off with the team going back to the drawing board to improve the recipe. As a private company, Impossible Foods can afford to take the risk of producing a meat substitute for steak, as even if their quarterly profit is impacted, it won't affect their business. But for a public company like Beyond Meat, they must focus on attainable innovation right now. It already has a decade of experience with a chicken substitute, and it's ran new trials with Yum Brands KFC in the past year. This makes the most sense for Beyond Meat, and I think it has the option to enter this highly lucrative chicken market. I wouldn't be surprised to see Beyond Chicken in the next couple of years. And finally, the last difference between these two companies is scale. In January, Impossible Food told Reuters it couldn't pursue a partnership with McDonald's because it wasn't capable of meeting the potential demand. However, we do know Beyond Meat is still pursuing the world's largest restaurant chain, suggesting that it does have the scale needed. Beyond Meat stock actually recently fell after its trial with McDonald's in Canada expired. Some believe that signaled the end, but there may be a simpler explanation. A global pandemic is not the right time to be launching new menu items. However, I believe a plant-based burger will be coming to McDonald's in the future, and this will mean tremendous upside for Beyond Meat if they manage to get that contract. Right guys, so here we are on stock. Now, I always get so many questions from you guys, and you always say, Ben, which stock research platform do I use? Well, here it is. It's called Stockopedia, and I use this to analyze stocks before buying them. Now, I've actually got a special discount link, 25% off if you sign up to the platform using the link below. It's exclusive only for the viewers of Motivation to Invest. So if that's something you're interested in, the link's below check it out and see if it fits your investing style. With that being said, let's dive into these numbers for Beyond Meat. So as you can see on um, Stockopedia, every stock is given a stock rank. So in this case, it's only got a stock rank of 42. The momentum 79, a lot of momentum behind it, value is only nine, quality 52. So there's a lot of momentum behind the stock, obviously due to the growing industry. 
Share price currently around $126 a share. It dropped to 66 um, in the crash of March. So you would have doubled your money investing then, which um, would be great if you're on the ball there. But this is what really excites me about this company. It's the growth. And this is a true growth stock. So the revenue has had an average compound annual growth rate over the past few years of 164%. Now, to put that in perspective for you guys, generally I consider a growth stock anything over 20%. If it's growing 20% a year, to me, that's a pure growth stock. This is 164%. Now, as the revenue grows massively like that, its share price generally follows. Um, the only negative is it's not currently profitable. But this is the case with many, many growth companies. Uber's not currently profitable. Um, Lemonade Insurance is not currently profitable. Tesla's only just become profitable this past year. So these sort of companies, growth companies, they generally just reinvest their profits into expanding the business. Um, but it is a risk for that company. Um, so you do need to be aware of that. So as you can see, your revenue is forecast to increase for 2020, 2021. Um, net income is forecast to increase for 2020 and 2021. So it is forecasted to become profitable and earnings per share. Let's check out the broker consensus from the analysts. So here we've got people here from Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, who've researched the stock. One strong sell, six sell, 10 hold, one buy, three a strong buy. So there's actually a few more people on the sell side, um, surprisingly. Um, whether that's just at this current share price or whether it's a general concern with the business, possibly due to the closure of restaurants, um, which may have affected the stock in the short term at least. Current ratio, now this is fantastic as well. So it's got a current ratio here of 6.48. Now, generally I look for a current ratio of around two. So a current ratio is basically short-term cash to your short-term debt or your short-term liabilities. So it's basically how many times can this company pay off its debts which are due within the say the next one year, maybe two years. Um, I look for around two because it means the company can pay off its debts at least twice. Um, this has got 6.48, so it's got plenty of cash on hand to weather any storm and also to continue expanding. Price to book value 20, that is high. P ratio 275.8, so this is not a value stock. This is not a stock for Warren Buffett style investors. This is a stock for momentum investors, those people that want a growth stock, a little bit more speculative in a growing industry. For example, once this company starts becoming profitable, gets a big deal with McDonald's, the share price could skyrocket seriously. Um, of course, if its product is adopted um, worldwide. Um, so that's the risk with this business. Overall, both Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat are fantastic innovative companies which are planning to change the food industry as we know it. However, Impossible Foods is a private company and Beyond Meat is public. So that is the only business you can invest into. So have I personally bought shares in Beyond Meat? Well, if you guys watch this channel regularly, you'll know that one of the unique things about motivation to invest is the fact that I'll reveal the personal stocks I'm buying and even sometimes when I'm buying them. So yes, I have bought shares in Beyond Meat. This is a long-term play on the changing food industry. However, the major risk of this company is its lack of profitability. However, this seems a common occurrence across many growth stocks these days. But remember guys, this is not financial advice, this is just my personal opinion, so don't invest any money which you can't afford to lose. But what are your thoughts on Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat? Have you tried their products and what do you think? Let me know in the comments below and I'll join in the discussion. Also, I've got a special treat for you guys. So if you guys haven't already, be sure to download Trading212 using my special referral link and you'll get a free share worth up to $200 or £200 when you sign up. If you already have this app, then why not consider downloading Stake app also? Stake is great for investing into a variety of US companies and has a little bit more of a selection than Trading212. They also offer a free stock worth up to $200 or £200. So I'll leave links for both of those apps in the description below. You can download them, deposit, claim your free share and have a Merry Christmas. In addition, if you guys enjoyed this video, 
I would really appreciate it if you give it a big thumbs up. That really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, which allows me to create more great content like this for you guys. In addition, if you want more investing tips and exclusive stock market picks, which I personally am investing into, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel and turn that notification bell on. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Invest safe.